Analysis Special Prosecutor Robert Mueller bears history of total failure, let's expose him. If you listen to liberals, Robert Mueller is the greatest thing since cheese in a can. Truth is, he has a long history of failure, much of it of his own making. When he was nominated to head the FBI, he was unanimously confirmed by the Senate. He had cancer and couldn't actually take over until September 4, just a week before four planes were hijacked by terrorists. He has had a knack for falling into major cases, some of which were badly mismanaged including one that led to a suspect winning a $5.8 million dollar settlement. From the LA Times But at 73 Mueller has a record that shows a man of fallible judgment who can be slow to alter his chosen course. At times, he has intimidated or provoked resentment among subordinates. And his tenacious yet linear approach to evaluating evidence led him to fumble the biggest U.S. terrorism investigation since 9-11. Now, as he leads a sprawling investigation aimed at the White House, Mueller's prosecutorial discretion looms over the Trump presidency. Mueller began his public career in the U.S. Attorney's Office in San Francisco in 1976. He played on the office softball team, where it is said he remained aloof and was careful in socializing with his peers. One former co-worker said that Mueller would join the team in an after-game beer. He would have only one, and then his wife would pick him up. Mueller's first huge headline case was against 33 members of the Hells Angels on a variety of crimes which included alleged bombings and murders as well as the manufacture and sale of illegal drugs. Mueller decided to prosecute them under the RICO statute. Racket Air Influenced and Corrupt Organizations Act That was considered an overreach because not only did he have to prove the crimes were committed, he also had to prove it was organized and that all 33 were working together. Mueller ended up only prosecuting 11 of the 33 suspects after he dropped many of the charges. Mueller only got five convictions with all five convictions being overturned on appeal. A second trial ended in a hung jury. Mueller decided not to retry the case. Richard B. Mazur, a defense lawyer at both trials had this to say about the prosecution of the cases. Key prosecution witnesses seemed unreliable especially those granted immunity to testify despite having committed violent crimes themselves. They made a mess of it. It was an entirely snitch case. It depended entirely on the quality of snitches. After that failed prosecution, Mueller was replaced and demoted. Mueller then put in for a transfer and was sent to Boston. While there, he negotiated a plea agreement with an East German physicist named Alfred Z. In the agreement, Z only was sentenced for the time he had served while awaiting trial. It did lead to a spy exchange between the U.S. and Russia. Mueller then moved to justice in Washington, where he was confirmed by the Senate the first time easily. President George H.W. Bush named him as Assistant U.S. Attorney General, responsible for the criminal division. Subordinates there claim he didn't invite differing opinions and it was hard to get him to change course even when he was dead wrong. If you tried to reason with him, you would be transferred in a move Mueller called moving the furniture. One such case came after he became the head of the FBI. During the investigation into the mailing of the anthrax virus, Mueller charged Stephen J. Hatfill, a virologist at the Army's laboratories at Fort Detrick, M.D., based solely on bloodhound evidence. Mueller ignored the fact that Hatfill had zero experience with anthrax and Mueller assured congressional investigators that Hatfill was their man. But Hatfill was not their man and he won judgment against the government for $5.8 million. After seven years, the FBI finally found their man, Bruce e. Evans, an Army microbiologist at Fort Detrick who specialized in handling anthrax. In 2011, Obama was deciding on whether to name Mueller to another term as FBI director. For three weeks, investigators examined the FBI and came to the conclusion that they inspected it and they wrote the inspection report, and it said the whole thing's broken, set it on fire and start from scratch. Normally that report would have been sent to Justice Department's Inspector General for possible follow-up action, but that was not done in order to protect the director. Mueller under the leadership of Mueller, several terrorists were investigated and deemed to be safe, just before they committed acts of terrorism. 
This is the man we are expected to believe will run a fair investigation of the president. Mueller has pretty much abandoned any hope that he can nail Trump on collusion with Russia and is believed to be investigating Trump business deals, completely separate from the Russian probe. We don't trust him. Tim.